Now to a Yorkshireman who's no stranger to danger and is in fact the only Briton to have scaled all 14 of the world's 8,000 metre peaks, which include Everest and K2. Alan Hinks first took up rock climbing at North Allerton Grammar School, but his mountaineering career has taken him much, much higher, and now he can add author to his remarkable list of achievements. He joins us now. I'm just going to ask you to put that little microphone straight onto your shirt, if you could, Alan. Yeah. Um, just rushed in now, here. Now, I want to get straight into <laughs> the crux of this, because these mountains are among the... Well, they are the tallest in the world, and there is a point when you climb them, when you enter what's known as the death zone. Hmm. Now, that... That means that beyond that point, the body begins to deteriorate and you are actually beginning to die. Oh, yeah, and um, and there's no chance of rescue by helicopters. The highest they can get is about 6,000 metres. There's no rescue teams. That's why it's called the death zone. You know, you'll only survive for about three days at the most. Usually, most people would only survive for a few hours, no matter how good your tent is, no matter how good a stove you've got to melt snow and ice, there's no water. So it's nearly as bad as Leeds Town Centre on a Saturday <laughs> night. <isn't it? laughs> Only joking. I, 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 I love I, Leeds. <laughs> I noticed that you started rock climbing at North Allerton Grammar School. Is that very hilly? No, it's only six miles to, to the North York Moors, and it's only, what, I don't know, 15 miles or so to Armscliff near Harrogate, places like that, so, you know, and Brimham Rock. So I started rock climbing on the gritstone and sandstone and limestone of Yorkshire. We've got some fantastic pictures there from the book, of course. Uh, just to describe, where, where is that? Do, do you know where that is? Oh, that's the top of, that's a shot from the top of K2, so that shadow is probably about, we've moved on now, it's about 1,000 kilometres long. That's an avalanche down a 10,000-foot face on K2. That's on K2 with a 10,000 foot drop straight below the other climber. That's some uh, clouds there. I think Paul or Keely are quite like <laughs> that. That's a little bit of cirrus um, at 26,000 feet. Uh, and K2 is another 2,000 feet above that, yeah. So many people, Alan, have died attempting to climb these mountains. You've climbed all 14. It's absolutely astounding. What drives you on to do that? It's a funny one, that. I've been asked that a lot. And philosophically and psychologically, I'm coming to terms with it because I should be dead. I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but most people that try and do all 14 don't do it, and the reason is they get killed. That's why there's still only a couple of dozen done it. There's no French done it yet, and nine French have been killed, and they'll become a household name in France, the uh, first French person to do it. Has there ever been one occasion where you have felt that you really were desperately close to dying, I suppose? There's been a few, but the very last one, Kanchen Junga, that I did, the third highest mountain in the world, um, I did have a real near-death experience happened? on that. Well, I got to the top on my own, in the dark, and then as I set off down in the dark, a blizzard started, so I couldn't see a thing, not even with a head torch, because the light reflected back off the snowflakes, so I just started shaking and hyperventilating, and I had a panic attack, because I'm a realist, I'm a Yorkshireman, and I knew I was going to die. That was it, and I just thought, well, you're going to die. But somehow I pulled myself together and focused on the tactical task, and I had to push the strategic picture, the fear, to, into a little compartment in my head. It was funny how I did that. You mention in the book, Alan, your grandma, and you also mention your daughter, Fiona. Mm. Now, they've had quite a lot to put up with, haven't they, over many, many years? Yeah, my gran always thought, when are you going to pack in this climbing <laughs> and all that? And she lived till she was 100, so there's hope for me yet, you know. And Fiona, I guess, had to suffer her dad going away a lot, you know and she just, her dad was a climber. I suppose she didn't realise at first how dangerous it was. But, you know, now climbing in Yorkshire is great. You know, it's not that dangerous going out on the gritstone and the limestone if you know what you're doing. And uh, t 10 seconds, what are, you, what are you doing next? I might write another book. No, that's a joke. This book was as <laughs> arduous as, as actually climbing the mountains. I'd like to go down the deepest hole in the world, you know, a bit of potholing. All oh, right, OK. Mm. Well, good luck. We'll follow you. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't, but we will. <laughs> it's an awe-inspiring story, and the photographs that you've taken are absolutely stunning. It's a great read. I recommend it. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Bye. <laughs> it's nearly